Good morning, everybody. We're at a unique museum. It's called the Voice Museum, and we're at Van Osdale and Farrar. Good morning. Good morning. Eric, good to see you, sir. Okay, there's so much in here, even though it's a small museum. I don't know where to start, but this is sort of the history of <clears throat> dictating machines, right? There's phonographs, there's dictating machines, and we're going to take you back 130 years or so. And would you open this up and tell us what we have in here, Eric? It all starts, you can even see it on the small card here. Before 1877, it's hard to believe no one had ever recorded the human voice. And uh -huh. at a point in time, Edison was actually working on one of Alexander Graham Bell's products, the telephone, but had ideas on different technology drew this drawing of what he thought a machine would be that could record the human voice, gave it to his chief engineer, and five days later came back with a machine that looks just like this. It's called the tinfoil phonograph, and the reason being is that it records on tinfoil, similar to what you know we use today. And on this, you simply wrap the tinfoil, talk into one side, a needle vibrates, and the first thing Edison recorded was Mary had a little lamb, fleece was white as snow. And what's his motive in creating this machine? What does he see the vision of doing? There's a list here, and he had 10 ideas uh, out of the gate, which number one on the list was letter writing. And uh, he had several other ideas, but primary letter writing. So this would allow a boss to dictate a letter and then the secretary, he, the secretary wouldn't have to be there at the time. And then Later she, she could transcribe it. Wow. Co correct. That changed the world, really. <laughs> but the problem was you couldn't take the tinfoil off of one machine and put it on another. So it kind of became a novelty. You see some examples here of other machines down below. Longer recording time, big flywheel for smoothness. The problem was back in 1878, that sold for $125, which was a fortune back then. I don't want to push you along too quickly, but Alexander Bell makes an improvement. We'll wrap this up here. Tell us what that is. Well, Edison jumped off that and started working on to invent the light bulb, but Edison, his cousin, and a guy named Charles Tainer got involved to improve now Edison's product, and they loaned him one of his tinfoil machines. Wow, look at that. And it looks... And, it look, and this is it. And this is an example of what they did with it. They stripped all the paint off of it. But the big thing, instead of tin foil, they used a layer of wax to record on, actually cutting the wax with the voice. John, can we c cut to the, this is right on the screen. So this is an example of how it could have been used, right? In an office setting. Isn't that something? Okay, there's so many more machines in here. And I know it's frustrating because mm -hmm. you have so little time. But we're gonna show you a couple more of the specific machines and the improvements that they made over the years and how it connects today. We'll be back.